Welcome everyone to the uh, Bo Desert Adventist Church. Um, it's been a while since we've been to here together and I would like to welcome you all. Uh, we have a board meeting, a business meeting um, tomorrow, tomorrow morning at um, nine o'clock and we'd like to see all of you there. At the church. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow morning at nine at the church. Our offering this morning will be our world mission budget. And remember that we do have the local church budget as well that you can um, send by e-giving um, and that'll be the blue bag. Thank you. And now we'll just bow our heads while we pray for the offering. Father in heaven, we thank you for the tithes and offerings that you so freely give us, Lord. We ask that you put a special blessing upon, the, uh, upon these offerings and let them grow. For this is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, we have a children's story for the children, so any children there? Uh, we'd like to um, see you all up there. Now, we're going to talk about um, Lot. So I'm going to read this one. On the plains of Canaan were two cities called Sodom and Gomorrah. They were full of wicked people who, died, who did cruel and bad things. And these, this made God very angry. Finally, he decided to do something about it. I cannot let these wicked con wickedness continue, God told Abraham. I must destroy Sodom and Gomorrah before the evil spreads. But what about the good people living there, Lord, replied Abraham. Please, can you spare their lives? He was thinking about his nephew Lot and his family who lived in Sodom. They were the only good people in the whole city. So that night God sent two angels disguised as travellers into, uh, into Sodom to find Lot. Tell him that he must leave the city and his family right away, he said. But Lot did not want to leave the city, and neither did his wife and daughters. What about the, our nice house, they complained when they heard God's message. What about all our fine things? At least the angels pursued them to leave, and just in time, no sooner had Lot and his family left the city. Then the sky above Sodom turned the colour red and the ground began to shake. A great shower of fire, burning grass, started to rain down on the city. Run for the hills, the angels told the family. Do not look back. Lot and his daughters ran for their lives, but Lot's wife could only think of everything that she had left behind. She stopped running and looked back with long longing at the city behind her and she was turned into a pillar of salt. That's our children's story, so I hope you get a special blessing from that. Um, before I start our sermon, I would like to um, say a prayer. Father in heaven, almighty God, this is a wonderful day that you have come to us today on this wonderful Sabbath day. We ask you, Lord, to be with us today. Look after what we do, Lord, and um, let my words be words guided through you. For this is my prayer in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Now, our scripture reading today is um, from 1 Samuel Two, ah, uh, sorry, First Samuel one, two, and three. I've just got to find that. So First Samuel one, two, and three. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Pinnah. Pinnah had children, but Hannah had none. This man went up from the city yearly to worship and sacrifice 
to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also the two sons of Eli and uh, Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Now if we just flick over to 12 and 14. And it happened as she continued, continued praying before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart and only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. There Eli thought that she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, oh, We'll continue on that a little bit later. Now, I am going to read to you something that happened some years ago. A long time ago, a cleaning contractor by the name of Merv came to the home of his sister to clean the windows of her home. As he worked, as the work started, he went inside to clean and the windows, clean the windows. His worker was cleaning the outside while he, and we will call him Max. While he was working inside, his sister called, sorry, inside, his sister called him over and said, why is it that you have such a man working for you? Look at him. He is not, he has no teeth. He looks scruffy, long unkept hair over his, overweight, and do you want to go broke? Merv said to his sister, don't worry, God is in control. Max um, suffered with a lot of issues. He was an alcoholic and he suffered with the DTs. He also was on drugs and was overweight as well as had a bad diet. Merv would go to pick, him, pick Max up from work because he was not allowed to drive. He had lost his license. Merv would knock on the door. Max would say, go away. There is no one here, Merv would say. I can see you hiding under the bed. Merv persisted with Max for several years. As an outsider, Max would rank as a 1 out of 10. 10 being the best and 1 being the worst. But why this example? Well, if we turn now to Judges 13, 1 to six. Again, the children of, uh, children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord, the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah and his wife was barren and had no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, please be, care be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So the woman came and told her husband saying a man of God came to me and has continued countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very awesome but I did not ask him where he was from 
and he did not tell me his name. Now we'll just flick over to Samuel 14, 1 to 4. Now Samson went down to Timah and saw a woman in Timah of the daughters of the Philistines so that he went and told his father and mother saying, I have seen a woman in Timah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and mother did not know that it was the Lord that he was speaking and occasion to move straight against the Philistines for that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel now if we just go over to um, um, chapter 16 verses 3 through to 6 now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there, and went in to her. And when the Gazarites told him, told were told, Samson came here. Uh, Samson had has come here. They surrendered, and they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying in the morning when. It was daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight, then arose at the middle of the night, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gate posts, pulled them up, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders and cried, carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. After it happened that he loved the woman in the valley of um, Choket, whose name was Delilah, and the Lord of the Philistines came upon her and said to her, Entice him and find out where he gets his strength lies and by what means we may overpower him that we may bind him to afflict him in every one of us will give you 1100 uh, pieces of silver now if we go to verse 10 then Delilah said to Samson look you have mocked me and told me lies now please tell me what you may be bound with so he said to her if they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall be come weak and be like others. Therefore Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. The men were lying in wait, saying, staying in the room, but broke them off his arms, like threads. Now, if we go to um, Delilah said to Samson, Now you have mocked me, told me lies, tell me what you may be bound with. Now, if we go just down to um, verse 16, and it came to pass when she had pursued him daily with his words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death, that he told her his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb, and I 
If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like other men. You say, what does this example of the contractor, Merv, and his worker, Max, have to do with Samson? The the Philistines were making fun of Samson and mocking him. One of the God, the God's, God's judges, as we look at. See, Merv's sister was mocking Max because he didn't look the part. Now, if we go to um, 16, 23 to 31, we will see what happened to Samson, which we do know. Now, the Lord of the Philistines gathered together to offer great sacrifice to the dragon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, Our God has delivered us, delivered into our hands, Samson, our enemy. When the people saw him, they praised their gods. They said, Our God has delivered into our hands our enemy, the destroyer of our land and the one who multiplied our deaths. So it happened when their hearts were merry and they said, Call for Samson that he may perform for us. So So they called for Samson from them and stationed him between the pillars. Then Samson Samson's hand, let me feel the pillars by the support of the temple so that I can lean on them. Now, the temple was full of men and women. All lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof, watching while Samson was performing Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray. Just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple. He braced himself against them, one on the right and one on the right on the left then samson said let me die with the philistines and he pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the lords and all the people were in it so the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life well here we are samson had <coughs> had a work that God chose him to do. God was still by his side even though he chose to walk his own way. And uh, Because he called out to God for help and God gave him his strength to destroy the, phil- the princes and the lords because they were mocking one of God's own. We will go back to Max and Merv um, and Merv's sister. Some years later, Merv's sister was invited to Merv's for lunch. There was a special occasion happening. Merv said to his sister, I would like to introduce you to someone. someone. He introduced her to Max and said to her that she had met Max some years earlier. She replied that she had never met Max before. Merv said to his sister that they had met some years before at her house, cleaning windows. Her eyes were in disbelief. The transformation of Max was incredible. Not only did he lose half his weight and clean himself up, all the other baggage was gone as well. Alcohol was gone, cigarettes, the drugs also. When he smiled, a beautiful row of white gleaming teeth were 
looking at her. Why, you say? As we look at people, we make presumptions about them. Max had changed his life because he chose a life with Christ. And with the perseverance of Merv, that, he, that was possible. In, John 1, 3, uh, in 1 John 3, 1 to 3, we have another beautiful verse here. That which was from the beginning, with we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handed, concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen, and the bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested to us that which was seen, that we have seen and heard, we have declared to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Matthew nineteen twenty six, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So in also Matthew, in John 3.16, we all know this verse very, very well. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel let's look at the words of amazing grace just the first voice verse Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. This was a um, song written by John Newton, a former slave trader who converted to Christianity after a a uh, crisis. He suffered a stroke and became an Anglican priest. He wrote 280 hymns. And another beautiful song that we can look at is um, Onward Christian Soldiers. Um, Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master lead against the foe forward into battle to see his banner go. The hymn theme was taken from references in the New Testament to the Christians being soldiers for Christ in um, 2 Timothy 2, 3. Thou, for endure hard, hardness as good soldiers for Jesus Christ. It was written to encourage Christians in their ongoing battle with temptations within themselves and evil forces through the world. The ultimate moral to this example is lest Let's judge less judgment and more Christ-like character. Who are we to judge? Our commission God has given us on his on this earth for a short amount of time. We have here 
is to listen, pray and trust and to have total faith in Jesus. Jesus is our only example. We put him on the cross and mocked him and pierced his side and drove nails into his hands and feet because we judged him how wrong was we that is why judgment is not left up to mortal man max in my story was not a good uh, Merv, max in my story was not a good business proposition but merv trusted god and he reached out to max and god changed max's heart and Merv trusted God enough not to give up and say, it's all too hard. Thank goodness that Jesus didn't and hasn't given up on us. He stayed on that cross. Even though we tormented him, scoffed and said, if you are Christ, Christ, save yourself. What did Christ say? Forgive them because they know not what they do. We can do nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit. But we must say, stay connected to the power source. At the time, once you disconnect from God, this is when we become selfish and judgmental to all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Then we cannot help people who do not have that great blessing and privilege of knowing our great Saviour. It, it is too late now to waste any apparent opportunity to share that Jesus soon to return to humanity. We can have eternal life. As we look at people, we make presumptions about them. Max had changed his life because he chose a life with Christ. And with the help of Merv, showing him that Christ loved him as he was able to accept what Christ could do, all he had to do was ask as well as letting God take control. Now, our last passage that I am going to bring to you today is um, in um, Corinthians 5. I oh, know, sorry. Um, Galatians 2.20. I was going to put Corinthians 5, but I found that Galatians 2.20 was probably a little bit more appropriate. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer what I live but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is my um, talk for today, and I thank you as we bow our heads. Father in heaven, almighty God, I ask that you will be with us all today as we worship you on this wonderful Sabbath day. For this is my prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.